Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Spader again, Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East Bay Times, here with um, Mike Lefkow as usual and Joseph Dykus as usual. And uh, we've got a, a special guest, Jesus Cano, who's joining us for the first time. Welcome, Jesus. Uh, how are things? Things are going well, Darren. I'm finally excited to be on these. I remember watching these, you know, when I was in high school and, you know, so it's kind of cool to finally be on one of these. It's exciting. Hey, Seuss has been our our beside, uh, behind the scenes guy this season, helping with roundups and getting those scores for everybody on Friday night. So a tip of the cap to Hey, Seuss for what he's contributed this fall, and uh, you know what? We'll, hopefully, he'll be able to contribute moving forward. Um, man, we got a few things to talk about. Oh man, we do, guys, guys. Um, you know, I was I didn't go to a game on Friday, so I'm I'm there helping with the scores with Jesus and Lefty and uh looking and see that 84 to nothing. And I, you know, you never know about max preps because right. sometimes there's fake scores on there. And didn't know if that was a fake score or not. Uh soon found out that it was a real score. And uh then we 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 went to work. Hey, Seuss, tip of the cap to you. You that was your roundup assignment, and you got a hold of Coach Rossiti, who I thought said the said the right things in his interview to you. Um, and uh, and then uh, Joseph got a hold of Ray Jackson yep. on a Saturday night, and uh, we weren't sure what Ray's reaction would be. We didn't know if he was going to take the high road or if he was going to be upset. And he was very candid. 24 hours later, how would you describe your interview with Coach Jackson? He was uh, very candid with how he felt. Um, and if you want to see the rest of that, you can read our article on uh, Bay Area News Group websites. Monday Morning Lights. Monday uh, Morning story. Lights. A lot of people have read that story already. So uh, we, we appreciate uh, you for taking a look. Uh, we wrote that story down the middle because the next day, College Park's athletic director, James Keck, sent us an email because after uh, Jackson's comments over at Ignacio Valley, uh, mm -hmm. we had to do our job and reach out, reach back out to College Park. So we got a hold of the AD, James Keck, and he explained uh, College Park's side of things. And in blowouts, I mean, that's what happens. I mean, you know, you, you see um, a wide disparity. There's a huge disparity yeah. between some teams and some leagues. Um, some teams know how to shut it down better than others. I'm not sure we weren't there. Um, Mike, you've been around a long time. What did you think when you saw 84 nothing? I mean, some people are comparing scores like 71-14 and 60-whatever to – to six or to nothing, but you, you know, off off uh, video, you mentioned that once you cross that eighty point mark, that that's going that that's taking it to another level. Well, I'm not as bummed out about this as so many people seem to be, mm -hmm. and I mean, in many respects, this is my home area. As right. people can see, I'm wearing a cap from my old high school, Pleasant Hill High School. Right. That school closed. The uh, students were given a choice of going to College Park or Ignacio Valley, and the vast majority of them chose Ignacio Valley. And I don't think College Park and Ignacio have ever been on the best of terms. Now, that being said, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think College Park could have shut it down a little bit earlier. But you know, the, the situation with high school football these days is part of the reason that you saw what happened Friday. Travis Rossidi is a fine young coach who's trying to build a program at College Park mm -hmm. High School. He he was a great player at College Park. He was a great player at San Jose State, all, all conference twice, all academic three times. He uh, played in the NFL for three years with the Eagles, Vikings, and Broncos. He's a bright guy. And he's doing everything he can to build a program there. But the situation now is that you've got to recruit your kids as much as is to, to keep them in your program. He's got a very good young quarterback, a sophomore. 
He's got a great young receiver, Tony Keck, who's 6'4", 200 pounds. I know his dad. His dad was a great quarterback at Pinot Valley. Um, they're trying to keep these kids and build a program. And everybody said, oh, man, how, you know, these kids are posing under the scoreboard that said 84 to nothing. I mean, you're kind of caught in a tough situation. You don't want to beat a team 84 to nothing. That's, that's not good for the game. But at the same time, he's trying to build a program at College Park. And he's got to do what he can to, to make the kids want to play there. And, you know, he'll be going after some of the same kids that Ignacio Valley goes after. I don't know if there's open enrollment at the Mount Diablo School District, but the border schools for College Park are Ignacio Valley and Alhambra. And Alhambra's a different school district. But you can bet that when College Park plays those two teams, they want to win. And they want to win convincingly. And like I say, I'm sure Jim Keck, who's a good athletic director, has been around. He will have a talk with Travis Rossini and say, hey, you know, you might have shut it down a couple touchdowns sooner. But at the same time, you know, they want to keep guys like Keck and this young quarterback, Voorhees, and, you know, I, both their receivers are young. And, I mean, they, they're looking at – they want to get into the upper division of the DAL, and they want to become a player in the East Bay again. Jesus, what did you think when you saw 84 to nothing? I was hoping that it was a wrong score because I know it would open a whole can of and you know stuff that we would have to do. You know, that's like you mentioned earlier. You know, you see a lot of people, some trolls, you know, sometimes like to mess with the scoreboard. But when I found it out at the end of the day and after, you know, finding out a lot of the details, you know, where I think a defensive lineman threw a touchdown and stuff like that. I mean, to 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 at some point I understand College Park wanting to, you know, having a very, I would say, renaissance year for their program. But at some point, you know, Ignacio Valley hasn't been a school that hasn't been as you know hasn't had success in in the past and you know uh, i think i think college park recent past who, recent yeah, past, recent past. Yeah, i was gonna I say think, major valley's had a lot of recent, recent past yeah recent past um but i you know i think at some point they knew that um and i think ray jackson had mentioned that they knew that you know mm -hmm. college park knew that ignatio valley was going to be down and i think they're you know, there could have been some way to prevent this. And I think maybe, you know, in, in the story, we had noted that there was like some celebration, excessive celebration and stuff like that. You know, at some point you got to, you know, feel for Ignatio Valley on their side, you know, because they, they've gone through blowouts, you know, for, for a while now. And to see that happen to them at the magnitude of that, I know for some of them, it probably had to be hard for them to, you know, just continue playing throughout the game. Uh, Joseph. From your experience yeah. back in Tennessee and then out here, I mean, if you had 84 nothing back in Tennessee, would would you have uh, – uh, would it be a talking point like it is here? Yes. Um, I honestly don't – I think it's the first time I've ever seen a score in the 80s. Uh, you, you'll see like 77, right? You'll see 70 to 10. The Southern California uh, team beat a team 100 and something to nothing last year. Yeah. Right. Oh, I remember seeing scores, but he personally hasn't seen them. Yeah. Um, I mean, my thoughts is, you know, the more I thought about it, if you're, I mean, College Park said, athletic director said that they emptied the bench. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone got to play. And so, I mean, it would be hard to tell a kid who had played much all year, hey, don't score a touch. Right. Down, right. Because this, this might be their chance to score. So, I get it be difficult, but at the same time, we, we see every week uh, a team goes up by 50, uh, goes up by 55, 60, and then they, like you've said, they shut it down. They use the entire clock to maybe slowly well, go down. Uh, you know, an example in the WCAL, I think Sarah scored 36 against Valley mm -hmm. Christian in the first half and nothing in the second half. Uh, talked off air with uh, some of our other colleagues here, and one was pointing out that, you know, in the, in the WCAL, I remember – years ago talking to a coach who coached forever at WCAL and we were talking about blowouts like ugly scores like 60 70 sometimes 80 and he's like you would never see that here I was like well how he goes the way you run the place and you run them in between the tackles the way the blocking is set up you're not running it where there's going to be huge open lanes basically just a running you're you're beating yourself as one of one of our colleagues said earlier today so, um, but it's a learning, learning experience for everybody. 
and it happens. You know, the one thing though, and, and right, okay, some of these schools, all right, WCAL schools, they they are used to having experience. Uh, they are used to having good seasons. Uh, Pittsburgh High School is a school that's had a lot of uh, success. In College Park, I think they're still finding their way. And mm -hmm. I'm not trying to defend what College Park did. Right. Um, they should not have had a defensive lineman throwing a pass. But, it was a screen pass, I heard. Oh, well, yeah, it's great. But, you know, okay, that's something that somebody needs to say something or CD about. You don't do that. But, um, I, you know, you've got a young coach, a program that's trying mm -hmm. to find its way. College Park has never won a section title in football. Ignatio has won at least two. Um, you know, I think it happens with a young coach and, he, and a program that's trying to find its way. And I'm sure in Tennessee, yeah. if Tennessee beat Alabama 84 to nothing, probably be a week-long holiday. Probably. Yeah. Uh, speaking of oh, by that point, by that point, they'd be going for 100 nothing. They wouldn't stop at 84 nothing. Well, that's what Lee Jackson break. said College Park was doing. Um Speaking of playoffs, we're two weeks away. We got this mm -hmm. week, next week, and then it's playoff time. Um, the North Coast section, Lefty. We talked about this off off air. We got a big game next week. Clayton De La Salle. The winner will be a top two seed in that NCS open slash division one bracket. Loser goes to D three or D uh they're in that bracket, but they'll be a three seed probably. What do you think? Uh, I mean, if Clayton wins that game, they're going to play. They're going to be a one or a two with Pittsburgh in the top half of the bracket. Both teams will win the first round, play each other for the open division championship in week two of the playoffs, with a loser moving on to week three of the playoffs to probably play De La Salle. So, um, if you're Clayton, do you want to beat them next next week? Or do you want to beat them uh, in the playoffs? No, oh, well, I'm Clayton Valley. I'll, I'll, I want to beat them as soon as I can. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. I understand what you're saying. It's tough to beat a team twice in the <clears> same <throat> season. But yeah, I mean, if I'm Clayton, I'm I'm out there to beat De La Salle next week if possible, and then I'll wait for the playoff game to see what happens. Hey, Seuss, you're a Pittsburgh alum. Your team yep. is the last. NCS team to uh to beat the Spartans 31 years ago. Yeah. Don't think you were even alive. No, no, when I that was happened. Not. <laughs> no. Um, there was Joseph. <clears throat> no, I won't how either. important is it for Pittsburgh to beat De La Salle, especially with this team this year? I think if you go in and ask anybody in that Pittsburgh locker room or any of the coaches, they'll tell you that there's no excuses to to not beat De La Salle this year with the way that they're performing and the way that this team is loaded up. I mean, let's go back to that Folsom game. Folsom is a, a opponent that's on the quality level of De La Salle, right? And Pitt, and Big Galley said that he should have won that game, right? Yeah, they should have won that game. The, yeah. the Folsom coach said that, you know, maybe they, they, they kind of squeaked by it. So, there should be no excuse for him for Pittsburgh. You know, they've been in big spots before in the past and, you know, they haven't came through with it. You know, they haven't, we saw it last year against Liberty. Mm -hmm. We saw it in 2017 at the, at the state championship at Sacramento state. I know we were both there. We've seen it time in and time again, that Pittsburgh has the opportunity to play on the big stage, but when it comes to playing on the <laughs> big stage, they don't go through and they're going to have that opportunity against De La Salle. Right. And probably, I think probably probably yeah, they'll probably have that opportunity against De La Salle. So they and, you know, they have an excellent roster. They have a great coaching staff. And this is the year for them to to come through for it. You know, they it, it has to happen this year. for but them. Let me throw this other storyline. What if Clayton upsets De La Salle next week? And in the open division championship in week two of the playoffs, it's Jaden Rashada against Christian Aguilar. Dude, that would be something that no one probably saw last year when we were at the. I mean, me and Lefty were both at the at the D1 championship in Pittsburgh last year, and that would be when, great when Aguilar story. was quarterback of the Pittsburgh Pirates, filling in for the injured Rashada. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I know Aguilar's family is well rooted within Pittsburgh. So I think for him, too, it would be something that, you know, kind of I don't think any anybody from his family would have expected to see him playing for Clayton Valley, mm-hmm. you know, suiting up against the Pirates in the open division and potentially the open division championship. How cool would that be? That would be pretty cool, pretty something fully to watch and something that would be very, very interesting. Yeah, Joseph, you've yeah. seen both of those teams. What do you think of it's Clayton Valley and Pittsburgh instead of Dallas uh, Valley in the Open Division NCS Championship? I kind of think that, I mean, you know, uh, Alabama, if you're watching this, you know, t- don't take offense to this, but I think Clayton Valley probably matches up better with uh, with Pittsburgh than De La Salle does because you've seen De La Salle several times. They're, they have some really talented defensive backs, but they're all like five foot eight, five foot nine. And Pittsburgh's got a bunch of 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, I think one of the guys, what, 6'5", receivers. Um, whereas Clayton, Clayton Valley seems like they have some taller defensive backs. Their defensive line probably isn't as good as De La Salle, <clears throat> but it's still good, which last time I saw Pittsburgh, they struggled to protect uh, Jaden Rashada. Although they, their run blocking was pretty decent. Uh, so interesting with that but i would probably take i would probably take clayton valley just because they're over pittsburgh uh, over pittsburgh Whoa. i honestly think that they're clayton hey, Valley. what do you awesome. think of that i think that's a bold prediction but you know that i mean anything could really happen you know so i i, I don't doubt joseph on that he does his research he's out there on the field he seems his team's play so he's not making a judgment based on you know what he hears and what he, he's been he's been out there yeah Lefty, what do you think? I mean, neither way, it's going to be a great NCS playoff with these three teams, I think. You know, I'm, I'm kind of sitting here deciding what I want to say, whether I want to throw a little water on this party or whether I want to say this is really cool. But, you know, being an old guy like I am, I think that this is part of the problem with football, high school football now, and why you had that whole Ignacio College Park mess last week. I mean, Jay, uh, Rashada, shouldn't he be at Liberty High School? Shouldn't Aguilar be at Pittsburgh High School? You got all this transferring going back and forth. And this is why you start getting stuff like these these wild scores, because everybody's trying to keep their kids. Yeah, it'd be really cool mm-hmm. if, if Clayton Valley and and, uh, and Pittsburgh play each other in the playoffs. That'd be really cool. You know, a quarterback from Pittsburgh now, Clayton Valley. And but I mean the thing is this is also the problem with high school football. I'm sorry, I hate to be the the party pooper here, but this is this is one of the reasons you're having stuff like this go on. You know, and I I have to totally agree with you, Lefty, on that because I mean even you know I mean I know I'm not you know as you know old and stuff like that, but I remember growing up as a uh, as somebody in Pittsburgh. If you went to the high school you went to, that was the high school that you were playing to. And I feel like that's, you know, I mean, if you were zoned for the high school that you're going to, you're going to play for that high school. I feel like that's not the case at all. You kind of see different people repping different cities that aren't necessarily from that city. So I can totally agree with what you're saying on to that point. I do want to point out another thing too for this, specifically for this scenario for Pittsburgh football is I think if if they have the they have the opportunity to play in the open division, whether it's Clayton Valley or De La Salle, we'll find about about that in a couple of weeks. But I think there's a bigger picture to it because I mean, let's 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 be honest. Like the representative in the in the CIF open is probably going to be somebody like Sarah or somebody even like Folsom, right? And they're going to go up against somebody like probably modern day. And we know we might see a score similar to what we saw at the College Park Ignatio Valley in that Open Division Championship. I mean, we've seen really? it in the past, right? Mm-hmm. But well, yeah. I don't know if it would get to 80. No, because I, I think, think they would do that. that. Even at modern day in St. John Bosco. They shut it down. Yeah, they've won so many games. that They'd shut it down before it got to that point. But the, again, you know. Before I, I, we move on, I got, a, I got a question here, and I'll let every, everybody chime in real quickly. With this great Pittsburgh team with all this talent, I'll start with Jesus. They don't get to a regional. How big of a disappointment will it be? Because, I mean, they could. Let's say they played Clayton in the Open Division Championship and lost. They would have to beat De La Salle the next week to go. 
it would just be the ult- it'd be ultimate, man. I think it'd be kind of they're so close there with the talent. You know, this is a a group that they've hyped up for years. You know, especially when Rasheed Williams came in as a freshman, he was a freshman playing on Pittsburgh, and that really never happens. And everybody around him came through. Everybody talks about how good that program is. And then to leave, you know, with I wouldn't say nothing to show it, but not with the accolades to show it. I think it would it would it would hurt Pittsburgh a lot, not just the program, but I think, you know, the city itself because the city rallies uh with Pittsburgh football. Lefty, you agree that if this Pittsburgh team doesn't get to a regional, it'll be maybe as bad as that twenty one to nothing lead in that state championship game and losing what what was that score? Twenty four twenty one? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I um yeah, it would be very. It would it would be crushing for Pittsburgh, but at the same time, who's to say Clayton Valley doesn't have the same amount of talent as Pittsburgh does? Maybe it's just well, they not might, as, man. I've yeah, seen I mean, them. On Clayton I've Valley, seen them. Yeah. They, they look good. Yeah, they do. I mean, that's a. Real, I mean, I think Clayton Valley's maybe got more talent in the trenches than Pittsburgh does. Pittsburgh's got the great receivers and the great. We see, we see Joseph shaking his head. He's seen them both. I'm a believer. I'm a believer in, in Clayton Valley. So, yeah, Murph didn't come out of quote unquote retirement to 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 not coach a good team, you know. Didn't Murph? And he didn't become. Didn't uh, Murph he coach didn't, at Ignacio Valley at one time? He was. Yeah, he was. Um, one last thing on playoffs. Will anyone in CCS beat Sarah? I'm gonna say no. No. I don't think so, but also, like we've talked about before, they get off to kind of slow starts, except for last week. And eventually some team, I think there are teams in the CCS that might be able to take advantage of that. Such I would say St. Francis would probably be the yeah. only team. Because they can match, they can, they've got the line, um, and they'll be more experienced in week 13 than they were in week whatever that they played early in the season. Uh, guys, I'll tell you the teams that are going to get great. Sarah problem would be Folsom or uh, St. Mary's High and Stockton. Don't overlook that one. Yeah, that's true. true. That's true. Uh, great round table. Let's get to the picks. We've already probably burned 20 of our 30, so-called 30 minutes. We usually go a little <laughs> over. Uh, game one on the list. Mike Lefkow picked the games for us this week. Thank you, Mike. Uh, game one on the list Thursday night, Menlo School four and four at Burlingame four and four. Um, top four teams in the league get an automatic berth into CCS, and Menlo School's on the outside looking in right now at fifth place. Uh, I'm taking Burlingame. Joseph, who you got? I'll take Menlo. Lefty. I'm going to take Burlingame. And our guest picker this week, Jesus. I'm going to take Menlo. And the computer takes Burlingame 21 to 20. Toss so, up. Toss up. Uh, game two on the list, Mount Pleasant, six and two. They came through for me last week against Del Mar. Hitting mm-hmm. the road to play Willow Glen, also six and two. Both teams undefeated in the West Valley division of BVAL. Um, I got Willow Glen. Lefty. I'm going to go with Willow Glen. Joseph? Willow Glen. Hey, Seuss. I'm going to go with Willow Glen, too. And the computer says Willow Glen 28 to 20. That's Cal Preps' computer, by the way. Uh, game three, also Thursday night, Santa Teresa, the Kings of Overtime. Three OT games out of eight games they played. They visit Lincoln, San Jose, coming off a bad loss to yeah. live oak you were there right joseph i was uh santa Teresa lost to live oak in ot and they lost last week i believe to christopher in ot mm-hmm. joseph who you got uh steve papp i know you're watching this uh sorry i'm at to go with lincoln i think lincoln's gonna come out pretty mad Ooh. with how they lost uh last week hey Seuss. i have to agree with joseph i think with the way lincoln lost to i think live oak Last week, I mean, they they're 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 looking for redemption. They're going to be hungry out there, and I, I got Lincoln on this one. Lefty, yeah, I'm going to go with Lincoln. I'm going Santa Teresa. <laughs> wow, wow, 
And computer says Lincoln 21 to 14. So Coach Captain, I'm on your side this week. Sorry, sorry, Kevin Collins over at Lincoln. Uh game four, Arroyo at Newark Memorial. Both teams are undefeated in their league, three and oh. Arroyo is one and six against Newark Memorial in the Max Preps era. Hey Suze, who you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Arroyo. Joseph. Uh, Newark Memorial. They're on a three-game winning streak. I think it's going to be four games. Lefty. Yeah, I'm going to go with Newark Memorial. They're playing pretty well right now. And I'm going Newark Memorial. And the computer says Newark 17, Arroyo 16. Lefty, did you look at Cal Preps before picking these games to make sure that you got the tightest games on the list? Well, I was looking at uh, looking at it a little bit, but I just wanted to throw a few curves in there. And I, hey, Arroyo and Newark Memorial, why not? They're both 3-0 you know, in, in league. There you go. Game five on the list, the Holy War. Bellarmine, uh, uh, disappointing 3-5 and five for the Bells, going up against St. Francis at 5-3. and three. Bellarmine had a long, long winning streak over St. Francis that ended about six years ago. And now St. Francis has won six in a row in this series. Key for Bell is Ben Pfaff. He's been out for what, Lefty, about three or four weeks now? Yeah, he's been out for a while. And it's made a huge difference. Yes, it has. For Bellerman. Not sure when he's coming back. I talked to uh, Glenn Reeves, uh, one of our colleagues, who uh, said that when he covered Bellerman, it was like week to week for Pfaff. Wasn't sure when, but it sounded as if he will be back. If he's back this week, I think this could be a really, really, really tight game. Um, but if he's not, I think St. Francis wins by 10 to 14 points. And since I don't know, I'm taking St. Francis. Hey, Seuss, who you got? St. Francis. Joseph? You know what? I haven't picked against Bellarmine all year. Why pick against them now? They're going to go with the upset. I'm going to go with Bellarmine. Woo. This is why. I, this is why I went. Uh, this is probably why I went six and nine last uh, <laughs> last week in the picks. Well, you didn't have to say that. You did pick Los Gatos. I did. And got a text from Mark Crail. Crail, yeah. Lefty. I'm gonna go with the Lancers over Bellarmine. All right. Uh, game six. Brian Christian at Concord. Concord six and one. Brian's five and three. I got Concord winning this game. Lefty. I'm going to go with uh, Concord. Joseph? Same. I'm going with Concord as well. Hey, Seuss? I'm going with Concord. They've been doing really good, and they've kind of bounced back from rough the past <clears throat> couple of weeks they've had, so I'm going to go with Concord. Yeah, I was going to say Paul Reynaud might be the coach of the year with uh, yeah. how Concord is going. Computer yeah. says Concord 28-21, and I missed the computer on the last game. They, uh, Cal Prep says St. Francis 28-14. Um, game seven, Branham at Piedmont Hills. Branham needs the win to stay, keep pace with Pioneer for the league championship. I got Branham. Lefty, who you got? I'm going to take Branham. I, I was really looking hard at Piedmont Hills. That's why I threw that game in there mm. because Piedmont Hills, they're two and six, but they've, they've played some tough games. But I think Branham might be a little too strong this year. Hey, Seuss. Branham. Joseph, you know what, Lefty? You talked me into it. Give me Piedmont Hills. <laughs> Not a bad pick. I, I I went back and forth on that one. <laughs> Game eight, California five and three. Joseph, you saw these guys last week. Yep, they got uh, over Matt. Uh, yes, Clayton. They're on mm -hmm. the road against San Ramon Valley. Um, San Ramon six and two. Mm -hmm. Uh. San Ramon has won the last three matchups between these teams. I think they're, they're going to make it four. I'm taking San Ramon. Joseph, who you got? San Ramon Valley. Uh, California's quarterback, Jaden Macedo, he uh, he had an injury last game, and Coach Calcagno said he's probably out for the year, so that's going to definitely injury. impact. Tough injury. injury. Hey, Seuss. I think before that injury would have been a really even matchup, but then even then I would side with the with the home team and I'd go San Ramon Valley. Lefty. Yep, San Ramon Valley. And the computer says San Ramon 
38-21. Computer also said Branham, 35-21 over Piedmont Hills. Uh, El Cerrito uh, against De Anza. El Cerrito's 8-0. De Anza, 4-3. De Anza's 0-12 against El Cerrito in the Max Preps era, but only lost last year 14-9. Lefty? I'm going to go with El Cerrito, but I think it's going to be closer to 14-9 than 40-9. Woo! Uh, Jesus? Uh, I'm going to go with El Cerrito. Joseph? I'm going to go with El Cerrito, too. Me too. And the computer makes it a clean sweep. Computer says 34 to 6, Lefty. Yeah, I don't agree yeah. with the computer. Here's an interesting game. Granada, 4-4 four and four at Foothill, 5-4. and four. Foothill won in overtime last week. Chris Lawson had a big game. But here's the interesting thing about this game. Our Phil Jensen, who uh, will be covering it for us. The last seven games Phil has covered. The road team is one. Mm. Hmm. Granada's the road team Friday. Lefty, who you got? Well, I'm going to break I think uh, Phil Streak's going to be broken. I'm going to Foothill. Hey, Seuss? Yeah, I'm going to go with Foothill, too. Joseph? I think Foothill probably wins it, and Cal Preps has it 31-14, so. There you go, and I've got Foothill. So we think Phil's going to see a home team win a game. Yeah. Game 11, Las Lomas at Campo. Campo has won the last 10 games between these teams. I think it's going to go to 11. I got Campo. Lefty? Yep, I got Campo Lundo. Hey, Suze? Campo. Joseph? And then uh, I'll be at this game. I'm picking Las Lomas with the upset. What? Yeah. Well, you're going out there on that one. Oh, yeah, man. Man. You don't want to do better than last week. What's that? I was like, you don't want to. You want to go? Than you want to go week? like two and thirteen this week? No. I think I think they have a good shot at. at Why uh, do you think they Houston. have a good shot? I want to hear this. I don't know. The vibes are just right. You know, I'm like, huh. I'm looking at I look at Los Lomas. Well, they, they beat talent. your team. They beat your team last week, right? Didn't they beat right. Miramani? They did beat Miramani. Um, they have some talent on the team. They seem to be playing well right now. And uh, Kempo just barely squeaked by Akalani's, which obviously is another good Very team. Very good team. Very good well, team. So, I don't know. I just think there's going to be an upset. Hey, sis, you agree? No, I think I think it's going to be Campo. <laughs> Computer says Campo 41 to 17. Okay. Uh, if they, when, the, when the upset does happen, I will happily gloat uh, okay. on this show. Next I'll week. take you out to lunch, Joseph, if that happens, man. We can go to uh, Levix again in San Jose. All right. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, game 12, Mount Eden, Berkeley. Berkeley, the home team. Um, I look at Berkeley's offense, man. 53 oh. against Washington Fremont, 44 against Hayward. I also look at Mount Eden losing to Hayward 41-7, to and that made it easy for me. I got Berkeley. Joseph? Yeah, Berkeley. Hey, Seuss? I'm going to go with Berkeley. Lefty? Yeah, I got to go with Berkeley on that one. Clean sweep, and the computer says Berkeley 31 uh, 21. Hey, Seuss, here's your team, Pittsburgh, 7 and 1, hitting the road to play Heritage 6 and 2. Pittsburgh is 15 and 1 against Heritage in the Max Preps era. Only loss was. Twelve years ago, yeah. And in that game, and in that game, game Heritage, to talk. what's that? And in that game, Heritage only ran the ball. They never threw it. They just ran the ball. And that one win against Pittsburgh in their program history. Just fun fact. Hmm. If Pittsburgh loses this game, they will not be a top two seed, and maybe not a top two seed in NCS. Open yeah. D1. Yeah, but that's that's not going to happen. I, Pittsburgh's going to beat them soundly. I would say even running clock um, in the second half. I know Heritage is pretty banged up now. And, yeah, I think Pittsburgh's got this. Joseph? Yeah, I think Pittsburgh has it. Although there is a scenario where Devin River they just run Devin Rivers, kind of like that last game they won. Just They run every single snap, keep the clock running, and try to win like 21-20. But, I mean, I think Pittsburgh probably wins easily. Lefty? 
Yeah, I'm picking Pittsburgh, but I'm not so sure it's going to be easily. I think it may be a little closer than you guys think. What I got, do you think? What's that? What, what would you? How close do you think it's going to be? I don't think it'll be a running clock. Okay. I got Pittsburgh. Computer has Pittsburgh 35-13. Does that sound about right, Lefty? 35-20 mm, maybe. Woo! Okay. Ooh. Game 14. We got two more games left. The Kings Academy 6-2 and two at Sequoia 8-0. This is for the uh, PAL, SCVL, El Camino Division Championship. Uh, TKA is 3-2 and two against Sequoia in the Max Preps era, but it's the first game between the teams since 2018. Jaden Underwood for TKA has been special this season. I got TKA to hand Sequoia its first loss. Lefty, who you got? I'm going to go with Sequoia to, to uh, beat the uh, Kings Academy. Hmm. Hey, Suze. I'm going to go with Sequoia, too. Joseph. You know, I'm going to go with Kings Academy. Uh, I've seen them now this year, and, yeah, Jaden Underwood is special. And the computer says Kings Academy 28-21. to 21. One game left. It's a Saturday afternoon game in Atherton where Sacred Heart Prep 7-1. Playing Menlo Atherton five and three. Clearly, Jury on Dickey will not be on the field for MA. Sacred Heart Prep has given up 61 points all season. That's it. Uh, no more than 13 in any game. But MA has won the last seven games between these teams. Sacred Heart Prep's last win was Ben Burkirvan's senior year in 2014 when the Gators went 13 and 0 and won the CCS Open Division Championship with a win over the Bells in the final. Um, I have picked against Sacred Heart Prep before. Not doing it this time. I'm taking the Gators. Joseph? Yeah, I'm going to go with Sacred Heart Prep. Lefty? Yeah, I got to go with you guys, Sacred Heart Prep. And our guest picker? Uh, I'm going to go with SHP. I think he's... If Dickie were to play for Men Lab, then I think it'd be a whole different conversation, but I think got to go with SHP at this point. So clean sweep for SHP, and the computer says Sacred Heart 21 to 13. So that sounds pretty realistic. Yeah. Uh, anything else to add before we round um, up? As always, athletic director, please uh, email your athlete of the week nominations to high schools at bayarianewsgroup.com. Uh, boys and girls, we take both uh, both both nominations. We want to hear from you. Hey, Seuss, anything else to add before we, we call it a day? I'll do a PSA similar to Joseph. I mean, we try to give as much coverage as possible to all teams, whether they won or lost. So coaches also send, you know, stats, you know, key plays from your games. If you want to be featured on the roundup, we would really appreciate that, and it would get your team coverage regardless of the outcome. Lefty. I don't know. I'm kind of hoping for a little more controversy this weekend just to see what happens. <laughs> Very different tone we'll than uh, me and Jesus. Very good. Guys, it's been fun. It's leadership. Yeah. Until next week.